I'm currently using Father Boniface's book, says Andrew Hartigan, through the heart of St. Joseph to study St. Joseph's virtues so I can be a holier and better man for my girlfriend. Great. Lucky girlfriend. And lucky you. Does Father have any insight he can give me into St. Joseph that is not in the book? <laughs> specifically in the way St. Joseph would have loved the Virgin Mary both practically and reverently so I can try to imitate in my relationship with my beloved. Uh, I don't know about not in the book. I I do talk a, a little bit about that in the book in terms of, uh, I think I do. I talk about St. Joseph quite a bit, so maybe I've developed it outside, but I really love the, there's some paragraphs in the Catechism on Chastity that, it says chastity blossoms in friendship. And I love to think of uh, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse in terms of that friendship. That's very warm and very human and, and very reverent towards, uh, towards the heart of Mary. Uh, so I think those kinds of things, I think he must have also really listened to her because he had great respect for her. I think men would do well to reverence and respect women and listen to them <laughs> and uh, really learn from her. I think that kind of quality of, of affirmation that we were describing earlier about re delighting in someone's being at that level, like not using or reducing people to qualities, but rather uh, rejoicing that the person exists. And I think uh, St. Joseph <clears throat> loving Our Lady that way uh, I love, you know, Pope Francis actually said when, when St. Joseph was thinking about separating himself from Mary, he said, she was the greatest treasure of his life. Separating himself from her would have been like an Abrahamic sacrifice, like Abraham sacrificing Isaac. I love that. So I think that's the kind of tender devotion, commitment, and treasure that he found in her. And I think that's a good model for a man towards well, his wife in particular, I guess girlfriend is still dating, but we should still reverence, you know, the, removing our sandals before the sacred ground of the other, really discovering the sacred otherness. And, and a, you know, the difference between men and women, right, is, is amazing. The, Tell me about it, because I know you've studied it. I, <laughs> I'm sure you've done a deep dive you know, there's a, into like neurology and whatever else. Well, there's a, there's a great book called Taking Sex Differences Seriously, and it goes into a lot of these things that are like, you know, pre-cultural, I mean, infants, so the, the, you know, little boys are attracted to moving objects mm. like mobiles, little girls are attracted to faces, you know, and these things that are not absolute, you know, but it's tendencies uh, and just fascinating differences between the, the feminine mind and heart and the masculine mind and heart and beautiful differences, complementarities. And so we should have a real reverence I don't understand her unless she reveals herself to me. We should come in with that attitude. Mm. I don't know who this woman is until she reveals herself to me. And she's not going to do that unless she really trusts me. And then I need to be really trustworthy. And then I can discover something, someone amazing. Yeah, I mean, as a father, and all parents would agree with this, like none of your children are alike. <laughs> well, if that's true... If none of the children on the earth are alike, <laughs> then maybe we should stop quickly categorizing people by how they look or who they remind us of. We so often, I think, prevent people from, what would you say, kind of mystif mystifying us or surprising us because we've got them figured out already? <laughs> yeah, no, it's really true. Uh, that uh, in, in Strength Finders, you know, the the strength of individualization is is uh, some people are really good at getting those differences and, and observing those differences and, and appreciating that individual nature of every person. St. Teresa of Avila said, uh, it won't be an exact quote, but something like, there's more difference between souls than between faces. There's, there's radically more difference wow. between souls than between faces, something like that. Yeah. And, uh, and just to see that radical uniqueness, which has embodied itself in various humans, you know, uh, faces and bodies. And, but uh, yeah, so much different. Fascinating. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching. Before you go, I want to let you know about Exodus 90. Exodus 90 is, an, is a 90 day ascetical program for men who want to take their spiritual life to the next level. And it is starting up again on January 9th for tens of thousands of men all around the world. And that could be you. You could be in that number. This is a great program that helps people really begin to take their faith seriously. I found this out recently. I thought it was fascinating. Independent research shows that Exodus men report significant changes in their quality of life. Dramatic decrease in time spent on their phones, stronger satisfaction rates in their marriages, improved relationship with their kids, a more focused and intentional prayer life. For the past seven years, Exodus has helped more than 60 thousand, count them, 60,000 men build a roadmap for living with virtue in a culture that offers far too many paths to sin and destruction. So is this the year for you? Go to exodus90.com slash Matt. Click the link in the description below, exodus90.com slash Matt. Click the, click the link to learn more. Thanks.